This is the Unit 1 Kinematics Progress question, FRQ number 1. This is a design a lab question, so the question itself is pretty straightforward. I'm going to approach it just as kind of a general guidelines of how to solve these types of problems. I'm assuming you've already tried this problem. If not, stop now and do it first. So the question, we have this ball rolling down this ramp, and the first thing really you should do in these designer problems is just kind of, you know, get a good overview of what you want to do. Okay, so just kind of do like a basic lab, what you think you're going to do. So we are essentially trying to find the acceleration, right? So if we look here, if we just simply drop a ball, we could say we're dropping it so the initial velocity is zero. Uh, if we measure the distance that the ball goes and we find the time, then you know, knowing using our kinematic equations, we should be able to figure out what the acceleration is. So that's kind of an overview of what the lab is. Um, we'll go into specifics a little bit later. Um, but let's just look at some of the questions they're asking. So one of the first things they're asking is, uh, what type of material should we use? So that's the next thing you want to look at. You know, what materials do we want? What makes sense? So in this case, uh, we have a stopwatch or a clock. Um, obviously, a stopwatch is going to make more sense since the time is going to be relatively quickly. And a clock would make zero sense whatsoever, right? So just cross that guy out. A meter stick or calipers. Well, calipers are used for very small distances. This is perfect. A meter stick is going to be perfect in this case for our use. The next question is asking uh, what kind of equation should we use. You definitely want to think about this. What equation is going to be useful? So we kind of already went through what we know, right? V initial, distance, time, and acceleration. So you just kind of look at your set of equations. You see which one's going to work for you. In this case, delta D equals VOT plus 1 half AT squared. And since VO equals zero, this just turns into delta D equals one half AT squared. The next page asks for the specifics of the lab. So the first thing they want to know is what are you going to measure? So we talked about this. We're going to measure distance D using the ruler. We're going to measure time T using the stopwatch and that's it, right? Those are the two things we need to measure. We could say the initial velocity. Um, I don't think this is needed, but we'll just do it just so we have our three givens here. Initial velocity, and this is just going to be zero because we know that we're going to drop it, right? Wouldn't hurt to put that in. They're not going to penalize you. Uh, again, I don't think it's needed. So we're now going to describe the overall procedure that we need. I pretty much described it for you. Um, so I'm not going to do that again. You kind of know what to do, I think. Some of the things I do want to just point out, and this is for any kind of general guidelines for any design a lab that we do. Um, the first thing is you want to make sure that you have multiple levels of independent variable. So multiple levels of IV. In other words, you, in this case, we would want to have multiple distances. So you wouldn't want to just drop it once. Maybe you're going to have a distance of, say, 1 meter. Maybe you're going to do 75 centimeters. Maybe you're going to do 50 centimeters. I would say the rule of thumb is at least three or more. Um, in this case, you know, since you're not actually doing the lab, you could just describe four or five different things. So you have multiple distances, and in this case, multiple times as well, right? So you want to make sure that you have multiple levels of your independent variable. The next thing you do want to make sure on all these designer labs is that you have uh, multiple trials. So this is just, just in your procedure, have some kind of repeat statement, repeat this three times and take an average. That's good enough to, uh, to cover your basis there. And the last thing is you should have the equation that you're going to use is a part of your procedure in general. Now in this case they ask you specifically what is the equation um, so you don't necessarily need to do that again but if they didn't ask that question specifically make sure that you you do that as a part of your procedure. So the next question is asking you um, about graphing. So your labs in general should be designed in such a way that you can graph it and again by doing your kind of multiple levels here 
it should be easy to do a graph. So they're asking you how to make a um, straight line okay, to find the acceleration. So that should tip off to you when you see something like straight line, right? Let me throw this away. If you see something um, to make a straight line, you should think about, okay, line means I'm going to need to somehow linearize my data. If it's not already linearized, you're going to want to make sure that you do that. So we've done this several times. Again, use the equation to figure this out. So remember our equation is essentially this, delta D equals um, one half AT squared, right? So the key here is that our displacement is proportional to D squared. So if you were just to simply graph distance versus time, you can see that it's gonna give you a parabola. So what we're gonna wanna do is graph, well, in this case, distance versus time squared. Notice if I rearrange this equation, I get de delta D over T squared equals one half a okay and delta d over t that's essentially our y over our x and y over x well that's going to be our slope right so if we can graph delta d versus t squared like this t squared delta d okay that should give us a nice line and from there, our slope, we can see our slope is equal to 1 half a, okay? Or to find our acceleration, that's what we're, they're asking about. We're essentially going to find the slope of this line and then double it. And that will give us our acceleration using our graph. So the last page finishes up with a couple conceptual questions. Um, you have this ball rolls down the ramp and then it's going to collide with the wall and go in the opposite direction at the same speed. The first question is what's the acceleration of the ball when it's in contact with the wall? So hopefully it's obvious to you if it has a velocity this way first and then has the velocity in the opposite way that the acceleration must be this way. It's going to to the left. It's going to first slow the ball down and then it's going to ricochet in the opposite direction. And then lastly, it says um, the, the ball goes with the same speed when it ricochets, and it also has a small time, very small, when it's in contact with it. And it's asking, is the acceleration greater or less than when it was on the ramp? So this one, you're just going to think about, well, acceleration is essentially the change in velocity per time, right? So if the time is really small, then the acceleration should be large, right? Acceleration is going to go up. So that's the answer. Acceleration should increase. It should be greater than when it's in contact with the wall. Um, another way you can also even, let's take it this to another level. Um, over here, the ball's on the ramp. It starts with a velocity of zero. It ends with some velocity, whatever it is. Let's just say it's five. So in that case, we're going from, um, what, five from zero to five? right? So that's a change of five. The other one, it's going, let's say, five this way and then five in reverse or negative five. So that has a change of, what, five minus minus five, five minus minus five. So that's going to be a 10 meter per second difference since it bounces off. So not only is the time less, but the velocity is more as well. So definitely the acceleration is going to be much, much, much bigger. So that's it for this question. Um, again, the design a lab question, super common. Actually, you should definitely expect to get one question like that. Um, so make sure you understand the basics of how to do a lab. Let me know if you have any questions.